Hey everybody, today we're going to connect this LCD touchscreen to an ESP32. It's a 320 by 240 SPI 2.8 inch touchscreen. It's one that you see a lot of when you see these LCD touchscreens. A lot of people have problems connecting them to an ESP32. We're going to see how easy it is. These have the ILI 9341 driver. And you can pick these up on Amazon for around $22. And while they all seem to have a built-in SD card slot, there's nothing actually special about the SD card slot. I'm gonna be talking about that in a separate video. We're not gonna be doing anything with that this video. Furthermore, this project will interface directly with Arduino IDE, which I just realized moved over to a point release of 2.0. So we'll be looking at that for the first time together. If you're looking for this video, but the version running on platform IO instead of Arduino IDE, click the link in the top right corner, we'll take you to it. The LCD display, as well as the backlit screen, pulls uh, a bit of current, and I don't want to run it through the ESP32's voltage regulator, so I have the separate power supply, which will supply the 5 volts and the 3.3 volts that I'm going to be using for this project, so I will show you how I'm doing that. This HW131 is one of the more common cheap ESP32 power supplies. So here it is, Arduino IDE 2.0, which I've just installed, as you can see in the output. Also wants me to update the libraries. And while it does install alongside the 1.8 release, it grabs the config files from that one to figure out what libraries and different projects you've had previously. Having upgraded my existing libraries, it now allows you to select a serial port and board per project instead of for the entire program. So a nice upgrade for Arduino IDE and I select my Do It ESP32 Dev Kit 1 and they have a pre-installed list of a whole bunch of them. It may have been from my previous one. I don't know, but it definitely arrived working like that. So I'm gonna go up now to Library Manager, which you would do on the older one or this newer one and search for TFT underscore ESPI. This will be the same on both versions of Arduino IDE. And we will find TFT underscore ESPI by Bodmer. And we can see that mine is already installed. And if it wasn't, you'd be hitting the install button, current rev being 2.4.72. Once installed, we'll be going into our Arduino folder. Mac has it in documents right there. And in Arduino, we go to libraries. And then in libraries, we make our way to TFT underscore ESPI. There, we'll be going to a file which is called user setup select.h and click that. And in that file, we're going to comment out this line right over here, which says use the user setup. We don't want to use the user setup. We want to comment that out. And we're then going to scroll down all the way down to setup number 42. And that's the 9341 to ESP 32 right there. And we're going to uncomment that line. And we can see it says for the 240 by 320. And then we're going to save this file. Which I just did. My save button is off screen. Then we'll close this file. And we'll make our way to the user setups folder. And in that folder, we're going to go down to setup 42 and open it. And in the setup, we want to uncomment the line for optional touchscreen support right over here. So I remove those comments and then I save this file. Now we could close this folder. All of the configs are completed. That's it. We're done. Nothing else to do. From here, we'll move right into the physical wiring. We'll call this out point to point, starting with the ESP32 and the LCD display. VCC will go to 5 volts. Ground will go to ground. CS will go to D15. RST will go to D4. DC will go to D2. MOSI will go to D23. SCK will go to D18. The LED will go to 3 volts. MISO will go to D19. TCLK will go to D18. T, C, S will go to D5. T, D, I, N will go to D23. And finally, T, D, O will go to D19. The last one is not connected. 
I wired everything as described except for this yellow wire. The module is running off the 3.3 volts off the ESP32 and not the 5 volts coming off of this power supply, which is not ideal. It's absolutely not what I wanted at all, but it's working even though the jumpers are not shorted on the module, which bypasses the voltage regulators on the module. Very strange. Some of these may be configured to work on 3.3 volts. This was in fact a mistake on my part, but it worked and I left it in the video. The wire to power the LCD display itself, however, is powered off the 3.3 volts of this power supply. Had I caught this and wired it correctly, it would have been much better than running it through the voltage regulator, the ESP32. So I'll hit my power button, and we're going to move on to the next step. Back in the Arduino IDE, we're going to open up the examples menu. I am scrolling down to TFT underscore ESPI, and from here, 320 to 240 examples. And I want to do something easy, make sure it's working. So I'm going to click on Starfield. And Starfield has opened up, and we're just going to do verify. This is the first time I've ever run 2.0. Let's make sure everything works. It should work. But we'll wait. We'll see it together. And it looks like I have a Python problem. I'm going to correct that quickly. And I just need to make a symbolic link from Python 3 to Python because this program doesn't have a configuration to say what the executable is. So that's done. And so we'll try verify again. And this time it worked successfully. So now we could try pushing it directly to the device. So we push it now. And I'm going to speed this section up by a factor of four so we don't have to sit here and watch this. But the push is successful and the ESP32 rebooted and we see the screen coming up with our Starfield program. And it looks really cool. I always like this example just because it looks really cool. We get a close up of this. Take a look at that. That's pretty awesome. But this just confirms that our test works so it's time to move on to our next example. I go back to examples and scroll all the way down. All the way down to TFT ESPI, again, 32240, and this time I'm going up to the keypad 240 by 320 application. One change I do want to make is on line 32 and set repeat calibration to true in case I mess it up. It's just easier that way. And, you know, if you want to review the rest of the code, you can. Pretty interesting how this is constructed. But that's the only change that need be made now. Again, I'm going to hit verify for good measure. And sped up by a factor of four, we see that the verification is good. So we then push this program to the device. This event, I speed up by a factor of six. Loaded and rebooted. Let's take a look. And it comes up to a calibration screen, so everything's looking good. And I have to be really careful not to touch the screen, or I mess up this process, and I have to reboot and start all over. So I'm being extra cautious here. And I'm just going to hit all the corners with that provided white touchscreen pen that it comes with. And then it comes into the program after that. And that's why I'd originally set that parameter, so if you mess up and hit reboot, you could do the calibration all over again. So we're going to have a look here. And it just looks like a, a phone touchpad. Very simple demonstration. As I clear the serial monitor, and I'm gonna type in, first using the pen, and I guess the resolution for typing is pretty good, and the features work, and it deletes. And I type in, I hit new, and it clears. Obviously, it's able to convey data as demonstrated with the send button. We see it appear in the output of the serial monitor. I'm trying with my finger as well, actually with my fingernail, as you see and it works equally as good. I didn't actually try it with my finger in this video, but with my finger, there was also no problem using this touch screen. And obviously we didn't do anything with the SD card as I had previously explained, because the configuration of it is universal and we're gonna demonstrate that in a separate video. But that concludes the configuration of this LCD touchscreen display 320x240 with the ILI 9341 driver. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When a follow-on video comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. 
Would you like to reply? <laughs>